All right, so here we are coming into actually before the Spanish Grand Prix as we wrap up Monaco. Uh, we have a voicemail from our uh, team, our uh, our team agent. So we're gonna go ahead and take a listen to that. Hey, Austin, it's your team agent here. Hope you don't mind me leaving a voicemail while you're dealing with everything after the weekend's race in Monaco. I just wanted to let you know a few things. I was able to get a contract signed through the FIA that allowed me to be a personal agent for F1. So I'll be sticking with you wherever you go. Next thing on the list that I've heard is Alonso is said to be retiring at the end of the season. So that will cause some movement here before the summer break. So best be on your top form in these the upcoming races. You did hear this from me. Sergeant and De Vries might be on the shopping block at some point when it comes to contract renewals. So hopefully you can get some decent results and take some points off them that will put you in good stead. With the board. Sound good? Say what, I'll catch you later because I'm in the car at the minute. So I'll see you in Spain. All right, yeah, that's our uh, basically our voicemail from our now personal agent here in F1. Um, we keep doing what we're doing. It sounds like Williams will keep us uh, compared to our teammate of Sergeant if he doesn't manage to score some points. But uh, that of Alonzo leaving us to Martin uh, leaves us a chance. If we can outperform some people, we might be able to move into Aston Martin, and uh, we all know those issues that are going on there with uh, Lance Stroll and his father. Um, Lance Stroll is actually behind us on the uh, standings, so we're going to go ahead and go over there and take a look. Yeah, he is tied with us for 25 points, but uh, with the season results, he hasn't really been uh, he's been performing a little bit better than us, so uh, that would be the goal, is to get Aston Martin and hopefully stick with Aston Martin for a season or two and get up to Mercedes um, if Lewis Hamilton decides to retire or not. But I'll uh, we'll have to see as we head into the weekend with the Spanish Grand Prix. We'll see you guys on the field, or on the track, for qualifying. All right, so uh, I felt really confident. Uh, there were some moments where it really slipped up, and um, I don't—I don't remember if we had some parts come in, but uh, yeah, provisional pole off of P1. We'll have to see, but we're only three tenths ahead of Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari, and that is a big difference. Um, uh, for times, so it's the first time we've actually gotten full for qual and uh, let it on top five. But um, our teammate, a logo of Logan Sargent, uh, knocked out at one in dead last. So, I'll have to wait and see what happens. So, on to Q2. All right, so we're feeling really good here in the Spanish Grand Prix of um, Catalonia. And uh, <laughs> that last run put us up in P3. I know we're uh, kind of cheating the uh, boundaries a little bit on the uh, track limits, but um, we used a scrubs, the scrub set of tires from Q1. And uh, that got us into q3 so um trying to save our tires pretty much at this point so we have that set of soft tires for the actual race but uh, a little bit of overcast so kind of glad that um 
we didn't get knocked out of Q2, so a top 10 shootout with a new set of soft tires, and uh, hopefully we'll shoot for maybe top 5 start on this. So uh, yeah, I feel pretty good after uh, the results of Monaco last week. Let's go over to the Q3 shootout. finished it's time to remind ourselves once again of our top three Leclerc Verstappen and Johnson goodbye for now then but really we're just getting started make sure to join us again for lights out tomorrow all right so we're pretty confident after this a p3 finish uh we won't know if we will get any penalties from Leclerc or Verstappen but uh yeah p3 start on the second row for the Spanish and free here in Spain and uh, last time we really had something like this was Australia where we had that P2 finish so uh, we have a high chance at a podium finish as long as we don't have any issues with our uh, engine components which I know we have our heat component up there in the mid 60s or so so we'll have to keep an eye out for that so uh, let's get right to the main event So many eventful races here in Barcelona over the years. Do you remember Max Verstappen's first win on debut for Red Bull here in 2016? Two years before, we had the dramatic coming together of Hamilton and Rosberg going towards turn four. There's always a treat in store as we head back to the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalunya for the Spanish Grand Prix. It's an updated track at Catalunya, and the popular opinion in the paddock is that we never wanted the chicane in the first place. That's now been gone, the final corner is much faster, and at 2.9 miles and 14 turns, we await the Spanish Grand Prix. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. A fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole. And Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Johnson, Sainz, Norris, Russell, Fernando Alonso, Perez, Oscar Piastri, Hamilton, Gasly, Ocon, Bottas, Magnussen, Joe, Stroll, Hulkenberg, Sonoda, De Vries, and Logan Sargent. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. I'm joined again today by none other than Natalie Pinkham. Tell me, Natalie, obviously there's a lot of development work that goes on with these cars between Grand Prix. You know a lot about how test drivers and race drivers go about their business. So how do these roles differ in your eyes? Well, they say you learn the most when you're losing. So Mercedes had a full tutorial in 2022. I believe from that they will come back stronger and much more competitive as a result. They're not used to losing and they want to get back to winning ways. Ferrari will have been hugely disappointed with how their year tailed off after such a promising start in Bahrain. And as for Red Bull, well, they finished the year as they started in dominant form. I'm pretty sure they'll be able to continue that in 23 as well. That means three teams at the front. That is going to make for incredible racing in 2023. OK, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. All right, so uh, coming off of a good qualifying here. And um, the softs. I don't know if it was the overcast, but those softs just uh, on the high speed there in sector three, they didn't want to stick. And I haven't ran the mediums in qualifying, so I don't know how those will perform. So it, it, when I first started practice, it felt like those hard tires were very grippy to the track. And um, I was able to stand those. So 
I'm going to go ahead and go with the soft to hard compound. Um, and hopefully we don't lose too much momentum off of that. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. And um, probably there is not a, a personalized version of these. Let's go ahead and go in and I'm going to lose time. Uh, project losing time projectively to yeah so yeah we're just gonna leave it 11 lap softs and uh, uh, 12 laps hard so let's get right to the race Superb parking there, mate. Let's make sure we get the edge on the surrounding drivers as the lights go out. All right, so here we are at a P3 start here in Spain. McLaren Verstappen off the start here. As uh, we get to an okay launch, uh, Verstappen okay as well. And Leclerc dropping back as we easily take the lead from Max Verstappen on the outside lane. I don't know what happened with Leclerc there. He just didn't get that traction out of the start here. As we're coming through lap or uh, corners one and two, and three consecutively, Max Verstappen still close behind, about two tenths now, less than, as uh, we're trying to pull away from Leclerc here and the rest of the group. So it's myself and Verstappen. Verstappen makes a move on the inside. There's a little bit of contact here as I did let off the gas, and he's uh, basically coming coming on through, taking P1 from us here out of sector one. And um, I was a little worried here on these softs on this first lap, especially with the... Uh, good start but I did have the traction on the back tires that I needed for that start so that's why we did exceptionally better than uh, Verstappen and way better than Claire on the start but uh, coming through the rest of this track here um, this straight here out of the DRS and then this uphill turn uh, going wide uh, the first time it's not gonna be the last time we'll be going wide there is uh, this uh, first time during the race on this outside lane Instead of that last chicane and carrying a lot of speed through as uh, we finish out lap one and Verstappen is just over a second gap already ahead of us. Moving on to lap three, uh, Leclerc's turn. He gets the DRS here uh, end of lap three to lap four. And uh, we can see that Leclerc makes way to P2 and we're not going to put up that fight because we don't have that momentum even though we are on the uh, South Campound tires and he's on the cars. I believe so. Once again, we are going a little wide uh, here on this first bend into, I believe, the start of Sector 2. I don't remember where exactly the line was, but George Russell up next on the end of lap 6, pretty much doing the same thing. So we have the qualifying, um, we have the pace for qualifying, but it doesn't seem like we have the pace for the actual race quite yet. So we are dropping back uh, a couple places now. We're down one position from where we started. There's a little bit of wheel spin there out of turn three, and then turn four, the big bend. As uh, we're losing time, because Carlos Sainz close behind us, and uh, not much room for him to make a move, so he waits for another opportunity. As a uh, lap seven now, we're starting to really feel the effects of the soft compound tires, especially on this big of a lap. As uh, we try to defend against Carlos Sainz now, in the other Ferrari teammate Leclerc up in P2. As uh, Carlos Sainz now at the end of lap 8, start of lap 9, I think it's lap 8. Oh, it's the end of that lap 7. He makes a position, and like I said, we don't have that pace quite yet to uh, keep us where we're at in the position. And uh, lap 8, you can easily tell how much wear and tear is on these soft compound tires, especially with me putting the foot down on that long corner. So uh, moving on to lap 9. Uh, we're on board with Max Verstappen, and he is going to be our first retirement here. And uh, he's holding a strong lead, 4.3 second lead here, as uh, he has an engine issue. Not an engine failure, but uh, probably an electronic issue. As uh, here we are, up in P6, 
Uh, making a move past him. See him off to the shoulder there. Leclerc in the Ferrari. Russell in the Mercedes and Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari. Our top three about a third of the way through this race here as uh, it's Lewis Hamilton's turn in the Mercedes. So we're not putting up that fight. Um, he does have better momentum than we do. Especially with DRS. And then we're just going to basically put up with losing that position because we're not anywhere close to fighting these top guys here as we're going way out to the green and uh we're getting pretty close to the time that we need to come in for these top tires as uh, we see perez uh trying to make a move after after hamilton did here in sector one and um, side by side here coming through sector one i believe the start of sector two alonso's trying to find some room to get through us as uh, he makes it past Perez up to T7. So, uh, yeah. And it's uh, the end of lap 11, and I forgot that they told me to come in, so I almost missed my uh, pit box, uh, my pit strategy uh, time to come in. As we can see, Piastri out of the corner uh, make a pass on us up to T6, as uh, I believe that was Leclerc in front of us uh, coming out of his pit box, and then the Mercedes of uh, Lewis Hamilton as well as we swap over to I believe the hard compound higher so it is soft to hard compound and it took a minute for me to remember it because I skipped right to the beginning of the race as uh, we're back down in P11 and uh, yellow flag here in sector one I'm not sure what happened but uh yeah so P11 on lap 12 we have to make up some ground and uh we make a pass on our teammate Logan Sargent in the pits, as well as Gasly. And then I don't believe we make a pass on Alonzo. But uh, yeah, so lap 14, we have some other people in the pits as well. Oscar Piastri, the other rookie uh, for this season, makes it through the pits and we get that free position on lap 14. So we're currently up in P8. And that's going to be all she wrote for this race here in Spain with the P8 finish for us. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. Another Spanish Grand Prix is over, and what a special race it was. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, confidence breeds confidence. Success breeds success. They are very much enjoying a purple patch right now. Here come our winners now, a thrilling race and a tremendous effort by Ferrari. Their history is well known, so it's no surprise to fans the world over to see them come out on top once again. Let's see how the driver's standings have changed. George Russell takes the lead of the driver's championship. Let's focus on the driver of the day. Natalie Pinkham, come on, who do you pick? Carlos Sainz would be my first choice for this race. He had excellent race stamina, giving him the opportunity to charge through the ranks. Let's move on to the constructors. The lead at the top comes down after a strong weekend from the challenging pack. I'm equal parts exhausted and elated with this weekend of Formula One, so be sure to join us for the next one. All right, so a uh, pretty okay race. Uh, we started in P3, we dropped back down to uh, P8 um, after uh, losing out on some momentum with those top tires. And then uh, there was a the yellow flag that really took part in why we lost another few positions other than other than a uh, undercut from uh, possibly Fernando Alonso and uh, Lewis Hamilton moving up from P10. So that was surprising. 
A double podium for Ferrari, Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc. Lewis Hamilton, Lewis Hamilton just missing out on that podium behind Charles Leclerc. As uh, Ferrari and Mercedes were in the fight for this race. As um, Max Verstappen had a DNF there early on in the race. And uh, yeah, so he loses out on some points now. Making George Russell the uh, current leader for driver standing. As uh, we did bump up to uh, P9 for our position. Go out getting some more points. But it was only four points. So uh, we did surpass. I don't believe we did. No, we, we did not surpass anybody. Alpine was there before. And then the Haas is at 35. So... Yeah, Nico Hulkenberg coming in P10 behind us for that extra point. So, uh, yeah. And uh, Logan Sargent not doing so great there as he only gained one position. On, uh, actually, no. It's not the right one I'm looking at. It's, uh, he gained, he went up to P17. So he was like me and Monaco last, last week. Or uh, the last race. So... Yeah, and uh, once again, Nick is not doing so good in Alpha Powery. So, uh, yeah. And that still leaves Joe Granu, Logan Sargent, and Nick DeVries to not score any points. The best one did get one. And that's pretty much the sum up here in the Spanish Grand Prix. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode for Canada.